All right, so today we're gonna show you the Sony A7S III all-in-one rig that we use to shoot real estate. It's one of our rigs, but what you see essentially on this table is everything that I would bring out onto a gig. Uh, not only the gimbal, which I'll explain in a second, but all the accessories, the audio, the lighting, the tripod and the lenses that we use to capture time lapses and other stuff on location for real estate content. We can start with the Sony A7S III, the camera body. Now we've been using Sony cameras since uh, the S2, switched upgraded to the A7 III for obvious reasons. And now with this new camera, it's just kind of a it's kind of a game changer. Um, we were starting to fall out of love with the A7 III after we switched to the Pocket 4K just for the better image quality. Uh, dynamic range but now with this camera I don't foresee us changing for another five years at least so starting with you know starting with I think the most obvious thing the biggest thing on this table is talking about the ring right a lot of people talk about you know to get a ring or not to get a ring there's a lot of uh, single-handed gimbals out on the market now you know, Ronin S was very popular, but we've stuck with, been very faithful to the original, the OG for small DSLR mirrorless cameras, which is the Ronin M. Um, I think that it's a little bit more stable than the single arm uh, gimbals, mainly due to its design, but I also feel it's more stable to have a wider grip uh, on your gimbal. And the ring is, is essential because as you can see here, there's a ton of accessories on here. And the best thing about a ring obviously is rubber grips, but also the ability to mount as many accessories, peripherals, whatever you want to call them, uh, at once. As you can see here, we'll walk through it one by one, and every single piece of kit here just elevates the overall shooting experience, the production, and just being a one-man band. I mean, with this, you can shoot everything without the need for an assistant, without the need to, to set up a lot of equipment. All of this breaks down, fits into one backpack, with the exception of, obviously, uh, the ring. But it, I suppose it could, because this does twist off quite easily, and you can stuff it in a bag. So, arguably, you can, you can carry this all around in one bag. So this isn't our only rig uh, for shooting real estate. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. We're gonna set, we're gonna show you some other uh, rigs that we use, and they're all very different in their own way. And it really depends on your niche and your suit shooting style and, and how you want to produce. But um, you know the Sony A7S III. There's a lot of different ways to go about choosing a lens kit for real estate. Some people like a really versatile zoom lens something that can go wide and go tight without having to stop your, your gimbal and switch out the lens. That takes time, causes more wear on the camera, on the lenses. But this has been, this lens kit has been uh, my go-to for a few years now. And I pretty much built the whole business with this, with these lenses. And they're not that, they're not that expensive. And it really starts with you're wide. Obviously with real estate, you're shooting a lot of wide angle content. And what we have here on there most of the time is the Lawa 15 millimeter zero distortion lens. Now, being a zero distortion lens means that you get a very rectilinear view of the interior. And this especially is important for spaces that you know have vertical lines and there's no curvature at all and some of the wide angle lenses out there that we've tried you see that you see that curvature and it's just not very it's not very flattering and i think that a lot of people strive for that real estate photography look that very everything linear parallel you know uh, lines and 
you know, the, not only that, but dynamic range as well. And we're gonna dive into more videos about how to get the most dynamic range out of the camera and also in the post-production. There's a lot of tricks in the color grade. And we're even, gonna, we're even gonna dive into how to color grade for HDR displays using footage from this camera. Tune in, that's gonna be a separate video. This is gonna be all gear. This is gonna be all the kit that uh, we use on our real estate shoots. So we've already, okay, so the wide angle lens, um, there are a lot of different options on the market. And I think I'm gonna talk a little bit about lenses that kind of are on the horizon, things that we wanna buy, things that we occasionally rent. But for now, I'm gonna talk about everything that we've used to start the business and really have continued to use and just have never given up on. So the second line, the second lens in the kit is gonna be the 28 millimeter F2 from Sony. Not a very expensive lens either. I think this one's under uh, 500 bucks. And what I like about using, you know, these cheaper primes is that First of all, they're very sharp. Second of all, they have very fast aperture as well. So that's important for getting that separation between your subject and the background. Now, we use this especially for realtor presentations. When a realtor's on camera, you want to get something that's wide that kind of shows the depth of the space, but also is more flattering on them. And if you go too wide, if you shoot them on a 15 millimeter, if they're not dead center in the frame, they're going to be all sorts of warped, right? So I would never put someone in front of a 15 millimeter lens unless, again, they were dead center frame. One lens that I would love to switch this out for, which I might probably will probably do in the near future, is the Sony 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master. And we actually rented it, rented this lens once on a gig and just fell in love. I mean, it's, you just fall in love with the, the bokeh the separation of the you know the, pre the presenter and the background and it just gives a different uh it gives a different feeling i don't, I don't know um f2 is still very fast and at 28 still wide enough to capture a good amount of the space highly recommended i'm going to show some example clips of uh, things we've shot with this lens and then the next one is the the nifty 50 this one f1.8 50 millimeter sony lens i think it's uh two, less than 250 bucks this is, you know, this is perfect for detail shots, okay? So oftentimes what we'll do is we'll shoot a wide of the space on the 15 millimeter uh, Lawa, and we'll also come back and get those detail shots. I mean, this offers a different perspective, a different depth, and uh, especially when you're getting close-ups of things like appliances, different detail, different, um, I would say even, uh, sometimes even uh, people, We'll cut to a close-up if they're in the middle of a speech and giving us two focal lengths, different options there. F1.8, again, very fast. Not the best autofocus in the world, and but a lot of the imperfections of this lens tend to show, uh, show up more in photos than video. And we'll dive more into that later as kind of, you know, these, these are photography lenses that, uh, at their heart. But when you're, using, when you're shooting video, uh, it's a little bit more forgiving. Oftentimes you don't need it to be as sharp for video because again, you're, you're going down to uh, UHD, uh, scaling down to UHD uh, anyway. So on some of these 24 megapixel cameras, a lot of that megapixels, megapixels are, are redundant. You don't really need them for video. There's an argument for downscaling, yada yada, but we'll get into that in another uh, video. So next is actually, this one seems a little bit overkill for real estate, but I love bringing it out. This is the 70 to 200 millimeter Sony G Master uh, f2.8, and you know, being a 70 to 200 zoom with image stabilization uh, in the lens, you can do a lot of things even handheld. And, and what I love to do, actually, especially in high rises uh, and places with a view, is really zoom out, even handheld. Uh, getting a little bit of foreground into the scene and just showing what that view looks like, showing what the skyline looks like, the landscapes, if there's any landmarks in the frame. This is amazing for time-lapse videos as well. So we're going to show a few time-lapse videos that we've uh, shot with this for real estate. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about you know, how, how we use this lens, especially, I mean, considering how massive it is, very difficult to fly on a gimbal. 
but there's different mounting options for uh, our tripod, which I'll, I'll dive into in a bit. With these, um, with these three prime lenses, you pretty much have all the focal lanes you need for a real estate video, or even most videos, period. Brand videos, personal brand videos, commercials. But um, if convenience is more your thing, the higher end versions, you know, the, the higher end options for shooting real estate are going to be those those Sony G Master zooms. So there's the Sony G Master, the 12 to 24, which in my mind has got to be one of the more versatile lenses. It's a, it's a pretty new lens. I think it just came out this year, but you can, with very low distortion, you can get all the way to a 12 millimeter, which is even wider than this. By the way, Lawa does offer a 12 millimeter uh, zero distortion lens that's very similar to this, even wider. I haven't been compelled to buy it because I don't really, I think 15 is wide enough. And I think 12, especially when you incorporate motion into your shots, starts to look very fisheye and starts to make the size of the image kind of travel a little bit too fast. But if you're into that look, and it's especially important for tight spaces, I noticed you know, small bathrooms and, and spaces like that, that would work great in. And then you can zoom out to 24 for, you know, to more detailed perspectives. And with the 24, you can also even do probably someone on camera as well. That would be a great buy. That's kind of on the horizon for us. And um, also that 16 to 35, again, Sony G Master as well. Super high-end lens, great autofocus. 16, I would imagine it's a little just, you know, very close to the 15, which you're already using, but you could also punch into the 35 mil for those detail shots again. On the Ronin M, we have some some three very important pieces of kit, and one is the audio recorder. What we have here mounted on the side here is actually the Ceramonic SR Pax One, which is a dual channel preamp. If you're getting, if you're using any microphones that require phantom power which most of the high, higher quality microphones do require phantom power. Uh, the one we use is the Sennheiser AVX series of microphones. This one is the uh, MKE2. And what, what I love about the AVX receiver is just its form factor. I mean, it's, it's dense. You can, you can tell there's a lot of uh, uh, electronics uh, crammed into this. But being a very high quality mic, again, the setup is, is $1,000, um, I think over $1,000 now. Um, we have two of these, very high quality mics, super crisp, very low interference. We tried cheaping out on cheap lapel mics before and the radio interference killed essentially a few gigs. So immediately returned those mics and went with Sennheiser and never looked back, never, never cheaped out on, on audio again. So even with two mics, you can plug uh, into this XLR input. And we essentially, what we do is we record internally to the Sony a7S III. So we used to mount a Zoom recorder in H6 and then just do a clap and sync the audio and video in post, but just speeding up the workflow, we output a line level um, already amplified signal. And what's cool about the Ceremonic too is you can push one channel to the left and one channel to the right in a stereo signal. And the Sony will record both channels as a left and right. So you can even have two microphones hooked up. The one caveat to this setup is the Ceremonic does take DC batteries. Always need to come with an extra set of DC batteries if you decide to go this route. Another important part of this um, kit is the light, right? You should always bring a light on a real estate shoot and as multi-uses. Uh, this one is the ICANN uh, Onyx series. There's a 120 and a 240 version. And I had the 240 version, it's bigger. Uh, and it takes two uh, NPS style batteries and it's a lot of output. It's a bigger unit. Bigger is better because if you're shooting, uh, uh, if you're filming people, the bigger the light source, the more flattering it's gonna look on them. I used to have the 240, lost it, but I did have a 120 lying around and that's what's on here. 
And there's a, a sheet of uh, diffusion I put over because you typically don't want to aim their uh, LED uh, lights straight at people. This is not very flattering. It creates this weird shininess on their skin, weird shadows um, because of all those little individual LEDs. So I would always diffuse any sorts of light. And even though I have had a good experience with these ICANN Onyx lights, really what you're after is output, right? So there's another company called uh, Lupo who sell this Lupo Smart Panel Pocket LED. And this one boasts uh, 4,200 lux at one meter. Now, that's a lot of light for a small uh, on-camera mountable LED light. And on these real estate shoots, the more output, the better, right? Because oftentimes you're in dim interiors with very bright blown out windows or sometimes not very much daylight available at all. And sometimes, you know, you can't get your talent facing uh, the window to get that very soft key light on them or, or sometimes you just need a little bit of extra fill. That's where this light comes in. It's not powerful enough to be the key light uh, on a subject. So, you know, it's, it's, it's too small to be a key light, first of all. If, you, if this is the main source of light for any one person, it would cause very hard shadows and it wouldn't be very flattering. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Um, so with that, with that Lupo light, I'm curious to get uh, in the future even a few of them because they're powered by, again, uh, one NPF, but the amount of light it outputs is incredible. I mean, 4,200 lux at one meter, I mean, that's like a third of the way to another light we own, which is the um, Astra Light Panels Astra 6X, which this outputs 4,300 lux at two meters. So obviously much, much brighter than even that light. But um, if I can get a third of the brightness of this panel into that, I mean, think, think of how much light you can output. Think, think of, uh, you know, you could just completely brighten up a room. You could bounce it off a wall, off a ceiling and get a really good soft light on your realtor if you're shooting realtor presentations. Typically, this is typically this is in my truck, my trunk. So if, this, if the lighting situation is really bad on a shoot, I'll go and whip this bad baby out. Um, and it can be powered with a V-mount battery, so completely mobile. I've even used these outside, not having to plug it into anything. Very convenient, but that's more, that's more advanced. I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner. Um, so with this ring, more about this ring that I forgot. Small rig makes some really good feet for the ring because again, one, one of the main convenience factors of using a ring uh, versus just the handlebars that the Ronin M comes with is that you can sit it down or you can put it on a table, all right? I, I couldn't imagine using the Ronin M and carrying around that little stand. Uh, I think that's kind of flimsy and doesn't seem very convenient to me. So I like to be able to just have one unit in my hands, move anywhere I need to, I need to be and set it down when I need to have my backpack with all the rest of my gear, do any lens changes, any battery swaps. These hand So these handlebars that came with the Ronin M, obviously we're not using the handlebars. Uh, we took the grips and they actually fit on the ring as well. So I just have them as additional support here for the uh, for the base so I can set it, set it down on rougher surfaces and it's, it's more stable. There is a four quarter 20 mounts on the top of the Ronin M as well. Again, super convenient. We have like two magic arms plugged into here, one holding our monitor, uh, Ninja V monitor, and another one holding again our light. The Ninja V I can talk about for days. It's just the most, you know, the most valuable piece of kit that you can have for any camera rig. Never mind the monitoring capabilities on here. We like to use uh, the waveform and the false color to expose interiors and people. Using a histogram is not is not really good enough. If you're shooting real estate and you're not using monitoring tools or you're just using the histogram, it does kind of limit you. You can't see if you have like the best dynamic range in a scene with just a histogram. Uh, you can see if you're clipping or not, but you know that that that, that only gets you so far. Um, generally, you want to have things that have a lot of detail or a lot of color in the middle of that histogram. But only, only false color will tell you what parts of your image um, have what levels of exposure, whereas a histogram is just an average of all, uh, of all the values here. 
The ability to move, to have a bright monitor up here in your face, or even if you're slinging the, the Ronin very down low for lower angles, just the ability to look down and have a perfect uh, view of your, of your image um, and not have to squint and lean over and see what's in your frame on the on camera screen is, is very important. To me, it's very important. And what I would say, and this, this right here is something that's new. New member of the family here is the Insta360 One R. And all this, all this really is for is for BTS. My right, BTS and also some trick shots. So I've actually, I have a, I think it's a 12 foot, 12 foot, 13 foot uh, collapsible boom pole that we've actually flown this on. This goes way out there. And uh, with being 360, you can get a lot of cool trick shots. So I've done like balcony to balcony and like, you know, through uh, certain items in the space just to get some more, put some more spice on the, on the, on the video. In theory, you can, you know, you can even shoot other, other content with the 360. It is, you can use this underwater as well. It's waterproof. So we can do scenes where, you know, let's say we want to get, we want to push that camera through the water to achieve some sort of effect. We can do that too. Very small, very compact, uh, doesn't get in the way at all. And for BTS behind the scenes stuff, it's, it's, uh, it's perfect. Uh, moving on from the gimbal, work is that um, we have this tripod system which I'm pretty satisfied with.